Hello there, welcome to part two in the Misty mini series tutorial thing. This is uh, the chord progression of Misty. It looks like an absolute mess, but I'm going to explain it to you. You learn jazz songs in chunks of chords which appear in many, many jazz songs. You don't learn them individually. It's too many chords. Uh, if I were to count these individually, it's like you know, 18 or 20 chords. It's ridiculous. Whereas instead, you can just learn one, two, three, four, five, six, you know, six, seven blocks, which are a lot easier. And in those blocks, regular chord progressions are contained. So I'm going to help you to learn this song, and this is how you'll learn other jazz songs. So it starts on one in the key of E flat. I'm going to assume that you've watched part one, and you know how the melody goes and the structure and maybe the lyrics. It helps. This is all about the chords. I'll give you the chord progression and then some fancy versions of those chords. Part three, we'll put it all together and make it all sound very, very nice. Um, so, one. Try and get used to playing the chords with both hands. And then what happens next is a floating 2 5 1 onto the 4. So I've got F4 in bracket, brackets, which means uh, floating onto the 4. And then a 2 5 1. And that sounds very, very nice. So let's do that. The 4th is, you always stay in the master key. Doing it in this way, you never lose the master key of E flat, which of course you, you know. So, 1. 2 5 1 onto A flat, so B flat minor 7, E flat 7, A flat major 7. And it sounds nice if you resolve that to a 6. And then, what happens very often in jazz is that the 4th, when you've gone up a 4th, it becomes a minor. So that's something that happens very often in jazz as well. So, play a minor. Minor 7 here in A flat. A flat, C flat, E flat, G flat. So it goes, I'll play that for you now. E flat only. B flat minor 7. E flat 7, we'll make the chords fancy a bit later. A flat, major 7, down to the 6. And then A flat minor 6. And then again, what happens in jazz all the time? It goes up a fourth. That's what is happening again. Up to D flat 7. And then what is the most common chord progression in jazz? One, six, two, five, one. That happens next. One, six, two, five, one is right there. So you've only got one, two, three, four, five things to remember. You could even call that three things, really, if you put some of them together. So one, floating two, five, one onto the four. This is how you learn it. Say it to yourself, floating two, five, one onto the four. Resolve to the six if you want to. That becomes minor and goes up a fourth to a major third flat 7 chord and a regular dominant 7 chord and then 1, 6, 2, 5, 1 that is part 1 and it repeats twice done now the uh, second time around when you get to the end something that happens in other jazz songs as well is that you go off a 4th and play the minor where have we heard that before and then come back again and that's what happens so you just do the 6 you don't just go into the 1 at the end uh, 6 2 5 da -da 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 -da, 1 up to the 4 as a minor and then back to the 1 and then you're going to go to the dominant 7 chord or the flat 7 you know, E flat 7 that's like the transition chord onto the next part that part and that is what is it? floating 2, 5, 1 to the 4th of course happens in every jazz song almost and that's what's happening here F4 in brackets do a 2, 5, 1 onto the 4 Here's the 1, 7 as a transition chord. There's a little 7 there in the corner. So that's it. So let just go back to the to that part. Up a 4 to the minor. Flat 7. Floating 2, 5, 1 onto a, a flat. So B flat minor 7. B flat is a 5. You know the melody already, so you should be looking at the chord, not the melody. And then I resolve to the 6 because it just sounds nice. And then the next part is a floating 2 5 1 onto the 3, but the 3 is a minor. And that sounds quite nice. You'll see different versions of this, but this is a nice pretty one. It's the one I like to do. You're not going to go wrong with it. No one's going to complain and walk out. So uh, that melody goes the first time, floating 2 5 1 onto the 4. Then again. Now floating 2, 5, 1 onto the third of E flat, so that's G, so it's going to be A minor 7, D7, onto the G minor 7, so that's, that's the 2, 5, 1 onto the third. And then you're going to go 2 major third, 2 minor 
And that happens again very often in jazz. The two is first a major third with a flat seven, and then it becomes minor. Happens all the time. Then it goes five, one, and you repeat the whole thing again. So I'll do that again. Floating two, five, one onto the four. This is sort of in the second section from the flat seven chord, E flat. So two, five, one onto A flat. Very nice. Same melody again. Two, five, one onto three. Two as a major third. When you hit the B flat, you play the minor. Then you get this note is an 11 in the key of F, which is the key of the chord. So the melody is forcing you to play a minor 11, and that sounds really nice. And then you play your nice B flat as a five chord. And start again. You repeat the whole thing again. That's it. That is how you have learned Misty, and it's how you will learn other songs. So just to remind you, floating 2-5-1 onto the 4 happens a lot. Uh, the four, going up to a 4 and then it becomes minor, sounds nice. It went up another 4 to D flat, that happens sometimes, you go up two fours. One six two five one is in every jazz song. Uh, flat 7, very, very nice. Floating 2-5-1 onto the 4 again. Floating 2-5-1 onto the 3, that's very easy to remember. Floating 2-5-1 onto the 4, floating 2-5-1 onto the 3. And then a major on the 2, and then a minor on the 2. 5-1, this is like 2 major, 2 minor, 5-1, 2 Five one two two five one very very easy. Drill that away from the piano in your brain, and uh, you will then come to the piano when you can do it. Do it in sections. Just do the one floating two five one to the four minor upper four maybe, and then come back and go one six two five one. Just break it down into little bits. So that's much better than memorising all these endless chords. It's silly. Now, how do we make them nice? We're not going to include the melody in this video. This is just about nice fancy chords. So without making the video too long, uh, what can you do? Uh, just to play nice chords. Part three, I'll be a bit more complicated with the reharmonization and fancy things, but I'll just give you a couple of nice chords that I like to do. Uh, so it's nice to put a nine on top of a major seven. So here I'm just playing the chord from here. I'm not thinking about inversions because they aren't really a thing. You just play the notes of the chord. The F is the nine. It sounds nice. Nice. Now that chord, B flat minor seven, melody is a 9, so you're playing a minor 9 chord automatically. Now, because we're going 5-1 here into A-flat, E-flat to A-flat, that kind of chord, a 5-1 chord, a very nice one, is a flat 9. So, in the key of E-flat, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 is the F, F-flat is an E. Whack in that note, as that melody comes down, it's going to sound really nice. So. playing the F, sorry. It just sounds really nice. Even if you exchange the melody note, which should be an E flat, keep that E flat in there. It sounds very nice. But even without the melody, just to play the chords from the beginning. Something here I'm just playing the, uh, the minor 9, but I'm putting the 11 on top. 8, 9, 10, 11. 11's like minor triad chords. Here's the flat nine. Very, very nice. You can put the nine in here because it's a major seven. This is if you're like accompanying a singer, perhaps, or just playing it for fun for yourself. Even if you play the chords without the melody, people will still know what the song is, I think. Then it's going to go up to the minor, um, which is, uh, you can put the nine on there again. You might put the 11 again, which is the four. Then you go up a four again to D flat. So here you can, let's play a nice one. Let's put the nine in there. Let's put the sharp 11. Sharp 11 likes major third chords. So eight, nine, 10, 11, that's the G. So we've got E flat, G, and the melody note is a B flat. That's a lovely shape. If you want to remember the triad for that, this is called an upper chord structure. You put a major triad on top of the ninth. Maybe write that down put a major triad on top of the nine and you get that lovely jazzy dark sound very nice in any key you play a dominant seven chord and the sh and the nine you play its triad so in the key of I don't know F you play the dominant seven and you go to the nines triads so that's G and you get the same sort of 
sound. That's one of those nice jazz things to do. So, from the beginning, 9, 11, and 9, flat 9. The 9 is nice, even with the 6 on top. That's the F I'm pointing at, the 6. Uh, then we're going to go to the minor, which also likes the 11, and the 9 is here. That's that lovely, uh, you call it like a, a D flat 13 sharp 11, and the 9 is implied. And then 16251. One, so come back to that 9 chord. Now on the 6, it's nice when you don't play the 6 as a minor, you play it with a major 3rd, which allows you to play lots of nice chords. How about this one? So I'll go on to it, I'll play 1, 6. How about that? That's a nice one. Same thing in both hands. 3, uh, 5, dominant 7, flat 7, sharp 9. Same thing. You could even put the uh, sharp 5 in there if you wanted to. Very, very nice sound. So it might look complicated, but there's nothing really fancy here. I'm just playing the third, because it's a major third based chord. The five is nice. You could call that a flat 13. You should, you should call that a flat 13 if there's a five here, because a five can't be five and sharp five. You've got the flat seven, of course, because it's a dominant chord, and then sharp nine on top. Lovely. But you don't have to, you don't have to clash the G and G sharp, you just keep playing G. And then when you get to the uh, F, it likes the 9. Here's a nice voicing. You put the 9 on the bottom and the top, so you don't play the F. So you, you play G, A flat, C, E flat, G. If you can't reach that, roll it. It's okay. Sounds nice. Or play it in a different kind of way. Maybe you might play it like this. So you base it on the 5. 5, flat 7, 9, minor. It's okay. It's, it's fine. It's nice. And then when you come to B flat, because it's a 5 1 chord, put the flat 9 in again. But it also, how about this? Because it's a major third based chord, that likes the sharp 11. That's going to kind of sound interesting here. Listen, it's, it's hard, but it sounds interesting. Do you like that? I hear silence in the room. But if you put the 13 with it as well, it just gets nicer and nicer. Then put the melody note on top. Oh, now that's some nice jazz. So forget the melody, minor 9 with the 11, flat 9, major 7 with the 9, 6, minor with the 11, the D flat that is, and then that nice voicing there. Now I'm doing that voicing I told you. That happened naturally actually, I didn't do that on purpose, that just came out naturally. The left hand is playing root minor. Flat 9, not playing the sharp 11 on that occasion, but I was going to play the 13, so. Upper 4th minor, touch on the 9. Flat 7, with the 9 it always works. Now, there's a nice thing that you can do here. You can, I'll do this in a bit more detail in the next video, but it just sounds quite nice when you, you play the 2-5, but just before you, after you've played the 5, you can exchange it completely, but I'll just give you this one. You go 2-5-1, but you go instead 2-5, and then you play just a semi, there's a reason for this, but you play a semitone above the target root, and you play the 7 chord, but flatten the 5th, because that keeps it in the key of E flat, you see? Sounds nice. And this is a tension note. Now just listen to that, isn't that nice? So you're just playing a semitone above the 1, with a, f a, a regular 7 chord, but you're flattening the 5, works in every key. And it just, it just releases into it, it's like a breath of fresh air, it's nice. So, sounds nice.
almost played that sharp 11 on purpose because I wanted that tension. There's just a couple of things to do there. Uh, and then when it goes up to that second part on the um, on E5, we've done that one. And the second time, you can play this lovely A minor 7. It's inverted here, but that's not so important. You can sort of do any inversion. But here, we're getting a 9 and the 11. So here's another trick. When you're playing a minor tri, when you're playing a minor seven chord in any inversion, on its fifth, you play a minor seven. That gives you, in the master key, in the key that you're in A, I'm playing E. It's like another upper chord structure thing. I'm playing E minor seven, what looks like E minor seven, on top of A minor seven. But if you think about it as a, mi as a minor seven on top of a minor seven based on its fifth, then you get the 9 and the 11, and the 11 happens to be the melody note in this song, so it's just quite nice. You just play it automatically. Oh, sorry, too much blues. Even with the bass, you don't even need the A minor chord. The A defines those notes, and it's nice. Now, this is something I do on this. I don't stay on the D, I go up to an E flat here. And again, I'm playing a D7 with a flat 5. And I'm doing the 7 with the flat 5, but without the 7 on the right hand, because it's in the left hand. But I'm putting the flat 9 on top. Flat 5, flat 9, they're lovely sounds. Those are the G minor. I guess you could put the 9 in here, but you'd have to put it everywhere, but it's nice. And then the F with a normal major 3rd. So you can play this chord. Flat seven, nine, three, thirteen or six. Seven, three, six with a nine. Uh, no, now, if you keep the F in the bass and you play what looks like E flat major seven, it isn't. It is in the key of F still because the bass defines the key. So it's flat seven, nine, eleven, thirteen. So if you want to have another upper chord structure, you play a major seven based on the flat seven. You have to write some of these down and just learn them and practice them by, by heart, really. So that's quite nice. So we just go into that part and then I'll just uh, finish to the A1. Here I'm just playing that G minor nine, open out. This sounds nice, no? Oh, of course, you can just play it in its actual position. And then you come to the B flat one, with a flat nine, maybe a 13, even a flat 13. Which is quite nice. You can put the melody, melody note on top as well. So hopefully that has given you a lot to play with. But what you've learned in this video you can apply to other jazz repertoire. And of course, part three, I'm going to really fry your brains because we're going to go a bit more deep and do a bit more improvisation. And I'll probably, or maybe in this one, I think, maybe not in this one, actually, because it's not really a rhythmic song. So I'm going to go into some improvisation ideas. And then in some other songs, we'll talk about rhythm a bit more as well. So there you go. Hopefully that has been of use to you. As always, likes, comments, subscribe, you're always welcome. Have a look at my video management website, Waterspinism, Syllabus, and perhaps Patreon. And I'll see you in the next video. All the best, and bye for now.